Okay, so here we have a relatively large open space, which then turns into this narrow space right here. So a large space becomes narrow. And on this side we have, we're gonna imagine that our engine is on this side. So the pistons, when we start the engine, we're gonna imagine that the movement of the pistons creates airflow, which it does as the pistons, as the piston goes down, it creates a void, uh, an absence of air, an absence of air is an absence of air pressure or a, uh, a vacuum. And as the piston moves down, it creates vacuum and air does not allow an absence of air pressure. So air outside from the atmosphere flows into the engine to fill the void created by the piston. So we have now, by opening this door, we have essentially started the engine and we're allowing airflow to occur uh, because the pistons are moving. Now we're moving into the, from the large space again into the narrow space. This door is gonna be our fuel. And if I manage to close this door without touching it, that means that I have created fuel flow and that I'm pushing fuel into the engine. Now again, on this side, we have another uh, large broad space, broader and larger than our narrow space in the hallway. And this here is gonna be our throttle slide, throttle butterfly. And by operating this, we're essentially operating what we operate with our foot or with our hand when we operate the throttle. Okay, and now we're gonna go back to the door. We're gonna open that a bit more. So the effect happens a bit faster. I'll just set the camera on a tripod so that it's stable so that we can clearly see uh, what happens with the door. So how did we get this door moving? How did we get fuel into the engine by using nothing other than airflow? Well, we did it because we got the atmospheric air pressure to work for us. Now, the atmosphere in which we live has an a pressure and it's called atmospheric air pressure and it has pressure because there's a lot of air in the atmosphere above us and all that air mass, the weight of all that air is pushing down on us and that's creating uh, atmospheric air pressure. And this is why also atmospheric air pressure is highest at sea level. And it's lower when you go up on, uh, in, onto a high mountain, when you're on a higher altitude, because on a high altitude, there is less air mass, total air mass above you. So there's less weight pushing down on you. And so atmospheric air pressure is lower, the higher up you go in an elevation. Now, how we got atmospheric air pressure to work for us is that we reduced pressure on this side of the door, but atmospheric air pressure remained here behind the door. So we had higher pressure here, lower pressure here. This got the door moving. And then basically the drag of the air moving through the narrow hallway slammed the door shut. Now we reduced pressure on this side of the door because we increased air velocity. Air velocity increases because our narrow hallway creates a sort of constriction, a bottleneck right at our broad open spaces and air builds behind this constriction and then it pushes air through the narrow hallway, increasing its velocity. You can experience this yourself if you grab a garden hose and obstruct half of the garden hose with your thumb. You'll see how the water now exits the garden hose with greater velocity. Uh, now, an increase in air velocity leads to a reduction in air pressure because the fast moving air molecules, they basically bump away the still standing air. So they sort of disperse it. They reduce air concentration, if you will. And this then reduces air pressure. Now, this fact that a increase in air velocity leads to a decrease in air pressure is called the Bernoulli principle. And a carburetor works just like this apartment. Now, if we take an actual carburetor, we will see that just like the apartment, the carburetor at both ends has a broad open space, which then transitions into a more narrow passage. This part of the carburetor is called the bowl or the float bowl, and this is where the fuel is.
Now, just like the door I showed you, one side of the fuel is exposed to atmospheric pressure and the other side is exposed to a reduced pressure created by the increase in air velocity. If we take this hose, which is connected to the bowl, and we blow into it, we will see that air comes out through this tiny little hole here. This is the hole through which atmospheric air enters the bowl and exposes the fuel inside to atmospheric pressure. Now, if we unscrew the top, we will be able to operate the throttle slide. And if we remove the throttle slide, we will see that right in the middle of our narrow section, there is a hole. This is the part that is exposed to the reduced air pressure that occurs in the narrow section. So just like the door, the fuel receives atmospheric pressure on one side, but it is exposed to reduced pressure on the other. Because of this, atmospheric pressure can push on the fuel and fuel exits out through the hole in the middle of the narrow section. What actually happens is that atmospheric pressure pushes the fuel so that it protrudes slightly above the level of the hole and then the incoming air drag simply skims the fuel off the top and takes it into the engine. This too is like the door. Atmospheric pressure starts the initial movement and gets the door into a position where air drag can grab it and slam it shut. Now, the more we open the throttle, the more we lift the throttle slide, the more air we allow to pass through and the more fuel will be skimmed off and taken into the engine. But the action of the throttle slide raises an important question. As you can see, the throttle slide features a needle which goes into our fuel hole. The needle is tapered and this plays a key part in the correct metering of the amount of fuel that exits the hole. The taper of the needle means that the higher we raise the throttle, the more fuel comes out the hole. Makes sense. But when the throttle is released and the engine idles, we can see that the needle pretty much completely blocks the hole and the throttle slide itself is so low that it obstructs proper airflow from the top of the hole. So how does fuel then come into the engine? Well, it comes into the engine through this tiny little hole instead. As you can see, this hole sits behind the throttle plate and it's not blocked by the needle. This hole is also much smaller in diameter and that is because the engine, of course, requires far less fuel when idling than when it's under load. If we remove the bowl, we will see two more holes which correspond to the location of our two holes in the narrow passage. These are called jets. This is our pilot jet and our small hole receives fuel through this jet. The other jet is called the main jet, and it's connected with the larger hole that fuels the engine under load. If we remove the two jets, we can see how their internal diameters are of course very different, which corresponds to the different fuel quantity requirements during idle and under load. If we take a hose and place it on the pilot jet, and then blow through the hose, we will see that air, of course, comes out through our little hole in the narrow passage. But it also comes out through this hole on the other end of the carburetor. And this is where we get airflow when the engine is idling, especially when we just start the engine because the throttle side obstructs airflow through the narrow passage, we have to bypass that path and get our air from elsewhere. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that significant airflow is only present through this hole when the engine is idling and at very low throttle. As soon as the throttle side lifts up a bit, more air no longer passes through here. And this occurs because the throttle side is a barrier between the engine internals and the atmosphere. Remember how we said that the downward motion of the piston creates a temporary absence of air and an absence of air pressure. This is also called a vacuum. 
Now, in reality, the piston cannot create a true vacuum or a complete absence of air pressure. Instead, it creates a partial one, but for convenience, we still call it a vacuum because it's more than significant enough to create a large difference in air pressure inside and outside the engine. Now, when the throttle plate is closed, atmospheric air cannot enter into the engine in significant quantity. And so the difference in pressure between the two sides of the carburetor remains. But in real life, we perceive this difference in air pressure inside and outside the engine as the air being sucked into the engine. Because remember, air always goes from high to low pressure. It aims to equalize pressure everywhere. In other words, when the throttle plate is closed, vacuum is strong. The engine relies on this vacuum to suck in air through the small hole on the front of the carburetor, which creates enough airflow to pull in fuel through the small hole in the narrow passage. As the throttle lifts up, atmospheric air enters and the pressure between the two sides of the carburetor equalizes. Vacuum becomes weak, which means that the engine no longer sucks in air through the little hole, and so the task of fueling the engine gets gradually transferred from the small to the large hole in the narrow passage as the throttle gets raised. But as you can see, the throttle slide does not fully obstruct airflow through the carburetor. There is still a small passage for the air that remains right underneath the throttle slide. And this means that even at idle, vacuum is compromised and it's not at its peak. This is why we have the choke. As the name implies, the choke essentially chokes off airflow through the carburetor. It completely blocks off the carburetor and creates a true barrier between the atmosphere and engine internals. This barrier maximizes vacuum strength, which means that the engine sucks in even more fuel through the small hole on the front, which is exactly what we need when we're trying to start the engine. So we choke the engine to get more fuel in it during startup and cold idle. In case you're wondering what this little thing next to our idle air passage is, that is the main air jet. And it basically helps to atomize the fuel coming into the engine and it prevents an overly rich condition when the throttle is fully raised and the needle is not blocking the main jet fuel hole in any significant way. So carburetors and apartments. Uh, you would never think that they would be similar, but they actually are when you look a bit closer. So that's pretty much it for today. As always, thanks all for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the Devore channel.